Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'll walk you through a couple of rounds of Elo Darkness which is currently on Kickstarter. Yes, of course, you will find a link to the campaign in the description of this video. Elo Darkness is based on the numerous MOBAs which stands for multiplayer online battle arena out there and I guess one of the most well-known representative for the genre is League of Legends. Much like League of Legends, the battlefield is divided into three different lanes, which the two to four players are fighting for. The core game is really a one versus one experience, but from the current version of the rulebook, there will be also a map for a four player team game, and it seems there may be even some solo rules available at some point in time. Woohoo! Each player starts the game with a deck of 40 cards and this deck consists of exactly 5 heroes with exactly 5 cards each. The rest of your deck is then filled up with action cards. Normally you construct your deck through a drafting mechanism but as you won't have any clue whatsoever what each of the heroes brings to the table there are also some yeah, starting decks available which work pretty well. But overall the games comes with a lot of hero, action and item cards to choose from. Look at this whole bunch of cards. Those are the cards for the action deck, those are the item decks, those are the two hero decks. So really a lot of stuff. For today's walkthrough I will focus on the two player game and I will be using the starting decks which really is already pretty fun to play and should show you most of the stuff that Elo Darkness has in store for you. I already prepared the game board, shuffled all the cards, set up the item cards that each of the players starts the game with, but unfortunately you still need to buy those in the course of the game, but you still need to decide which item cards will be available for you for the match. The most likely way to win the game is to move the minion marker on one of the lanes into the other player's camp area. One is enough to win the game, so you often sacrifice one lane to advance on another one to actually win those games. So those guys are here, those minion markers which you want to move into the other player's camp. The towers on both sides of the battlefield will slow down your progress but can be removed under various situations which I will explain in more detail when we get there. The game will also end at the end of round 10 where you will then determine the winner by counting conquered towers and then gained experience point for your heroes which won't happen too often though. As I've prepared everything already, I think we should be good to go. So in this case, I determined that the blue player will be the starting player. So this coin here is pretty much double sided. So you normally would flip it and put it onto the turn track here. And in this case, yeah, that's the blue player who happens to be at the bottom of this board. As I mentioned, I already shuffled those cards and I've already drawn the starting hand for each of the players. There's a chance for a mulligan, but I think right now that's okay for the blue player. I have to say that everything that you're seeing here is a prototype or a prototype component. So the final product may look a little bit differently, but overall things are looking pretty nice already. And I always love it when those prototype cards come sleeved. Okay, how does this game actually work? I already mentioned it that the game consists of 10 turns and yeah, by the end of turn 10, game is over and then you whatever tally up the score in respect to how many conquer towers you have or how experienced your heroes are. The first phase in each of the turns is the so-called farming phase in which you can discard any number of hero cards and the way to determine what a hero card is they all come with this extra symbol here over this symbol here. So this is an action card, doesn't have the additional symbol, so you cannot discard it at this point in time. You can discard any number of hero cards, but yeah, you may run short in the any given round here. And yeah, you get the bonus for each card that you are discarding that's printed here. So this gank here, for example, would give me two extra cards, which I would be allowed to draw. Here I could choose between a coin or a card and so on. Additionally, for each hero card I'm discarding, I can level up my hero or give him one experience point. So given, going back to the example here of this nice looking gang, and gang is a very MOBA kind of term in those games. Um, if I would discard her, I would be allowed to give her one experience point and now she's only one step away uh, of getting to level two where she would get an influence bonus of plus one, which is really huge. 
If I would have two of those cards and would discard both of those, I would still only get one experience point here. In this case, the blue player will discard this gank card here. And this is a so-called jungler. The others is a support card. It's just a color code pretty much. And yeah, by discarding this jungler here, Wind of Revenge Pinch, nice looking fella, I would now gain two coins. And yeah, this card is pretty much gone for good. But of course, I'm now allowed to increase the experience point for my green hero by one. Keep in mind that in my action deck, I have five cards of each hero and each hero corresponds to one of the colors you've seen here. Three of those are so-called laners and laners are always associated with one of those lanes. So this is, I think, I don't know, fighter or something like that. That's a mage and that's a marksman or so and this laner belongs to this lane this laner belongs to this lane and this laner belongs to this lane on top of this i also have two of those so-called gangs and yeah those gangs are pretty much support characters which can help you on any of those lanes as each hero in my deck consists of five cards yeah i already let's say put the green hero down to only four cards left in my action deck as part of the farming phase, I can now spend the gold I've earned or maybe the gold I have left from the previous round in order to buy one or more of those item cards here. The price of those or the cost of those cards are printed on the top left corner of the card. But for now, I want to hold on to my coins because I have some powerful cards which make use of the gold coins I have. So I will call it a day for the farming phase so over to the orange player. And he decided not to discard any cards and he's also out of gold so he will not be able to buy an item card either. After the farming phase we come to the backing phase. So starting with the active player, right now that's the blue player, he can now decide if he wants to back out from one or more of the lanes. In this case he would actually lose ground. So for example if he would consider backing out of the blue lane here he would have to move his minion marker back one space. This would also mean that there will be no challenges on this lane for this round and you normally note that down by playing one of your three roaming cards on the according lane. So there is a spot for each of the lane and each of the players has one of those yeah, three spots available here and what the roaming card does it's pretty much printed on the card. Elena hero cards associated with this lane are considered to be gang cards until the end of the turn and no challenge can be declared on this lane. This now also means that the blue heroes for both of the players can now support on the other lane. So this is also one of the reasons why you would decide to back out from one particular lane. On top of this you would also be allowed to gain an extra card for this but in this case I think during turn, tur turn one, we are not going to do that. So let's put that back. Blue says, no, I'm not backing out. And orange does the same. He also says, I don't want to retreat. Okay, this now means that all three of those lanes are valid targets for challenges. So we are coming into the so-called combat phase in the deployment step of the combat phase. So each of the player will now play a card face down in his or her appropriate lane cards. You have to play one card. It has to be exactly one card here again face down. If you cannot do that for that or that reason there's always the chance to play one of those free lane cards but this is really something which you only should do if there is no other way around that. Okay let's play some cards. Again this is the blue lane pretty much. There's also a symbol related to that lane but right now the color is really important. So you can now either play a hero card that matches the lane. So in this case the blue hero card and I happen to have the blue hero and also the symbol matches for this lane. So there are really some very nice points in the game which help you remember what card belongs where. But keep in mind this card is now played face down normally so my opponent does not know what I will play. So I will do that for now. On this lane I will play this laner card here and I think on top of this I want to play a yellow card again. This needs to match the symbol here on the yellow lane. Keep in mind those action cards they don't have a color so you can play them on any of those lanes. So they are pretty useful and come with 
very powerful action. It's also important to mention that at this point in time you are not allowed to play the gang card. Again, gangs are really some more of support characters in this game, but there is a chance in the later step of this combat phase where you will be allowed to play those cards. The orange player does the same, so we'll play a card here, he will play a card here and he will play a card here. Again, this can only be either action cards or the appropriate laner card. Next we would reveal all our played cards here. Of course I have already done that for the blue player. And then starting from the active player, right now again the blue player, would now choose which lane to activate first. I think in this case he wants to activate the blue lane. The first thing that would happen we would trigger the deployed cards on the slot. So in this case it would be the card here for the blue player Crystal Spall by Ailish. If you have two or more gold in your pool draw two cards and that was the reason why she hold on to the money. So she would now be allowed to draw one, two cards and here we got another gank. Uh, that's okay. And here we have another laner card in action card last hit gain two gold. The same would now happen for the orange player. Draw a card. The opponent must discard one card from his hand. This is really a pity. First of all, he would draw a card, he would take it into his hand, and then he would need to discard one card. The blue player, I think. Ah, that's really tough. That's really tough. Hmm. Maybe I want to get rid of her the ganks, the, these, those are really pretty cool. So yeah, I will discard this card and then we would start the actual challenge phase where we would really play some action cards. Again, we would start with a player who has the initiative and that's the player who decided which lane we are fighting for right now. So again, that's the blue player. And he cannot do a lot of things. He can play a card with a gang trade from his hand. So those are now, or this is now the time to play gang cards or so those supporters pretty much. He could activate a hero ability chain. He could activate an item effect with the activation item. Right now he doesn't have any items. He could get greedy or he could pass the action to the opponent. But passing in this case is not necessarily a bad thing because the round only ends when both players have passed consecutively. So in this case you can always go back and whatever react to an opponent's action. And now it's important that those cards come with those influence values here. So this is pretty much how much fighting power they bring into a challenge. In this case, that's two influence points versus two. So there is a tie already, but it's also important to see or to check out how the other lanes are looking. And right now it's really tight on each of the lanes. So the yellow lane, they have both one influence point, the blue will, uh, lane they have both two influence points and the red lane they have both two, uh, zero points. I really did not do that by design. This was really something I really did not check out that well but that's like it is right now. So in this case he could really decide huh, maybe he should try to get greedy to be honest because getting greedy gives you one additional influence point. But on the other hand, the opponent would be allowed to take one card from his deck, which is always a bad thing, to be honest. And I think right now that's not really necessary, but I think blue will pass for now. Again, he can come back, but it's now the turn of the orange player. And as he's fine with his cards and overall there is a tie, he decides to get Greedy. So there is this get greedy marker. So this guy has now a plus one pretty much. So three influence versus two. But of course the blue player is also allowed to draw a card. And yeah, this is unfortunately a laner card, an action card. So this is a card that you cannot play during the challenge phase. There is an exception to that, but unfortunately it does not apply here because you could play the so-called hero chain. So in this case, he could have played an additional copy of that hero here, but it had to be a card that shows the opposite of the, let's say, tagline here. So there are ultimate cards and there are standard cards. In order to play a hero chain, you would have to play the opposite card. So originally we played an ultimate card here, so he would now be able to play a card without the ultimate trait. So I think this was already a very bad idea to discard her, but right now that's something I cannot take back. 
But it's also now the turn of the blue player again and I think now he will play a gank card. So he will play the Underworld Breath here from Sambia. And if the first card on the top of your discard pile is a hero card, you gain plus two influence. And guess what? The top card is a hero card. So overall, we have now four versus three on this blue lane. Next, it's back to the orange player, and I think he will play one of those hero chains. So he will play the same character, but again, in this case, he really needs to play the opposite card or the opposite kind of that card. We still trigger the effect, which says you can discard one card in order to look at the opponent's hand and choose and discard one of his cards. Also a very, very mean thing to do. So let's discard one card. And here the orange player sees, oh wow, he only has one more gank card left. So all the other cards are pretty much useless for the blue player this turn. So he will totally discard this additional gang card. So he definitely knows, yeah, how well the other rounds will go or the other challengers will go this round. The only thing that the blue player can do is to pass. He doesn't have any items. Only one player can get greedy, so this thing is gone for this challenge at least. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's four versus four, so here are four points of influence versus four points of influence. So there is a tie, so none of, of the minion marker for the blue lane will stay where it is. And then it's over to the orange player, who will now decide which lane to go next now he will have initiative and i think he will go for the red lane here because this would trigger this ability here worth it so he would draw one gold and on top of that he would oh two cards and on top of that he would gain one extra gold which is really a good thing and the only thing that's active here while this card is in play or at the top of your discard pile consider the opponent's gang card text to be blank so this is great but right now yeah the orange player hasn't played any gang cards yet and it's zero versus zero still the orange player would go first and as he knows what the blue player has in its hand he will again get greedy for a plus one here and this would allow the blue player to draw one extra card though there's definitely a risk but again he was very unlucky again he only did get one of those laner cards here and again during this step you cannot play a laner cards unless you're playing this as a combo. Again, the blue player has to pass and I think so will the orange player because he already has one influence. So it's one versus zero. So in this case, the orange player wins the battle here. So he would be now allowed to advance the minion marker one step closer to the enemy camp. On top of this, the red player will also get an experience point. In theory, you would also check for any potential kills, but right now only the orange player was threatened. So we'd look at the standard table here and only with an influence gap of four, we would see one kill. If the blue player would have won this challenge, we would check the threatened table because the orange player was greedy. And this means that you are threatened. And in this case, an influence gap of only one would provide you one kill. So in this case, the white here would have been killed. They always come back, but for the next round, yeah, he would not be available. One additional thing I forgot to do, was to deactivate all involved heroes. So during the last battle, it was the blue hero, the white gank hero. So I cannot use the white gank hero again. And the same would be true now for the red hero. And for orange, that's pretty much the same. He didn't use any gank heroes right now, so they are both still available. But because of the warding card down here, yeah, it doesn't really provide him any good. Of course, the influence point of those gank cards still would count, but the special abilities may not. And then it's back to the blue player. So he's now the active player or has the initiative. And again, there's only one lane left, so he would say, let's do the yellow lane. So we have the snake grip here. At the end of the challenge, if your opponent's total influence is equal or greater than three, kill an opponent's hero of your choice and gain one gold. It's not very likely that we would see that happening here because it's only a one right now. And I highly doubt that he will play two more influence points in order to win this lane because this would also mean to lose one hero and give 
one gold to the blue player. So normally Snake's Grip would be a cool card in order to play at a, let's say, hero chain, for example. So if you see that the other player is already pumping up his influence and then you would put this hero chain on top of it and then he says, oh man, I may have won this lane, but I just lost my hero. But I think in this case it would be a good idea for the blue player to get greedy. So he has now a plus one. So now he's forcing, forcing the other players to react on that. But still, if he would play too high, he could still lose a hero. So that's not necessarily a good thing to do. And of course, I forgot to trigger the last hit card. So he's still allowed to gain two golds from this. But right now he could play a gank card in order to get even and I think that's still worth it. So yeah, he will play this gank card onto this lane. This text box is now empty because the warding is still active, but the influence value still counts. So it's now two versus two and blue is pretty much out of yeah meaningful cards so again he will have to pass and again i forgot that the orange player was allowed to draw a card but this card doesn't do him any good either so he will also pass for this round so again we would see a tie so the minion marker will not move and now we do some end of turn steps first of all all of those guys will get reactivated. If a hero would have died, he would now return to the appropriate lane or to the gank area down there, but he would stay exhausted, so we cannot use him during the next turn. And now we would discard all the cards and move into the next round. We would also flip this token. So during the next round, the orange player would go first. And at the start of round four, for example, there would now have been an auction for those monster cards here, which is also a very cool little addition to the game. Again, we would move into the farming phase. This time the orange player would start and I think he will discard this Winds of Madness here. It's a really strong card, but discarding her gives an additional experience point for the red hero. So now all of her cards that she's playing has an increased influence value by one. Again, this is only true for her red cards, of course. But of course, we are still allowed to take a bonus and I think in this case, I will go for an additional card. But before we pass it over to the blue player, he will also buy items. He will first go for the legendary treasure. It costs him zero gold. Hey, why did you do we get it for free? Because it says requires a level two marksman hero. And guess what? We just upgraded nice little messy here to a level two. So we are now allowed to buy or purchase that item. And I think on top of this, he will also go for this golden shield here. This actually costs him money, so he will spend one gold coin. And this says fighter cards gain plus one influence. So each yellow laner card he's playing has now a plus one, which is pretty huge. There is a limit of three item cards. In theory, you could have also two yellow items, for example, but I think in this starting deck or starting item deck, it's basically one item for each of the hero classes. But again, three item slot that is. So if you have three colors there, you will not be able to support all of your heroes. Then it's over to the blue player. He will discard the Mana Recover Marksman. You can discard this card during the farming phase, which we are in right now. If you do it, search your deck for a Marksman card, reveal it and put it in your hand. That's really nice. So here is a Marksman card. He has to show it to the other player. Hey, this is a Marksman card I've drawn. And now he's in a good position because he has an ultimate and a non-ultimate card. So he would potentially be allowed to play it as a yeah, hero combo or a hero chain. Next, he will also buy some items. He will go for those desert boots. When you retreat from the desert lane, you draw two cards instead of one. That's a good thing. And I think on top of this, even so it doesn't really help him right now, he will play the owl drone, which can be activated, pay up to three gold to gain plus one influence for each gold you spend limit once per turn. So this is pretty great to be honest. So he has spent both of his gold coins 
items for this run, but they're still pretty powerful. And each of those items can be upgraded, by the way. So in order to go from the Owl Drone here to the Armor Drone, he would then have to pay three gold and then this effect would trigger for three gold. He would gain two influence for each gold you spend. So that's really, really huge. Again, we come to the backing phase. This time the orange player will go first and he feels pretty confident. So he says, no, I will not retreat. So it's now over to the blue player. And he says, yes, guess what? I will retreat from the yellow lane. Of course, he will lose ground. That's not a good thing. He would normally be allowed to draw one card now. But because of those desert boots here, he would now be allowed to draw two cards. Isn't that nice? But this also means that there will be no challenges on the yellow lane of this round. So both of the players will place their roaming cards into the appropriate slots. And that's really a pity for the yellow player because he just invested into his golden shield for plus one influence. And who knows, he may have some very cool yellow cards in his hands as well. Next, let's place some cards accordingly. But let's also keep in mind that the yellow heroes are now supposed to be gank heroes. And that's true for both of the players. So they can now play their cards on other lanes as well. Okie dokie, let's reveal those cards. So here we have a laner card, here we have another laner card. Let's see what the blue player picked. Okay, that's not bad. But right now the orange player has the initiative, so he will now go first and he will totally activate the red lane here first. That's peeling again, draw one card. Let's do that. And on top of this, the opponent must discard one card from his hand. That's really bad. So I think he will get rid of the peeling card for now. Well, this really hurts. But of course, his hero card will also trigger gain one gold for each support card in your discard pile. And if I'm not mistaken, he should have one, two cards in his discard pile. So in total, he will get two bucks, which he really needs in order to activate his Owl Drone here. So this is pretty powerful for him. But it's still the orange player's turn and right now he feels relatively comfortable. So I think he will, yeah. He also has warding in play. So this is something we must not forget as well. So the other players gang cards are blank. Um, yeah, but he will get greedy. So that's a plus one here. And again, he's in a very bad situation, the blue player. So now he will also play this hero chain in order not to lose more ground. So that's two plus two, gain plus one influence for each marksman card in your discard pile. But I think he doesn't have any marksman cards in his pile. So those would be the red cards. Oh wow, what a pity. So that's simply two versus two. It's over to the orange player again. And I think he really wants to win this lane. So he will play his gank here, the prophetic side, Giel. Look at the first three cards of your deck, draw one of them and discard the other. So this is what he will do now, pretty much off camera. And now it's three versus two, but the blue player still has something in his back pocket and that's his Owl Drone here. Pay up to three gold to gain plus one influence for each gold you spend. So he still needs two more influence in order to win this lane. And I think he wants to win this lane. So he will now pay two gold pieces. So let's activate this Owl Drone here. It's the red lane. So he's allowed to play that item. So it's now four versus three. So right now he's behind, but he still can play yellow cards. And that's because this laner is now considered to be a gang because blue backed out. So there are no challenges of the yellow lane. So this guy is now free to do stuff. And it's one plus one because fighter cards gain plus one influence. So again, he's winning. The printed influence value of the opponent's gang cards is reduced to zero until the end of this challenge. And I think, yeah, that's more or less it. Unfortunately, Blue could still play Sambia here, but yeah, he's not allowed to use the text here because of the warding effect. So yeah, he has pretty much lost this challenge. This means red will progress. And this also means that Orange has now yeah, captured one of his towers. It's pretty much a tiebreaker. 
but it also makes the path here much shorter. So whenever this guy is moving back, he will skip this space because the skip is no longer present. So he will move directly back here. And then whatever, if this guy would move back, he would directly go here as well. So movement will go a lot faster once one of those towers have been removed. That's really a pity. On top of this, the orange player gets a lot of victory points. First of all, it was the red lane, so the red hero gains one experience point. The yellow hero was present and the white hero was present too. So in total, he just gained three additional experience points. And yeah, next we would have to exhaust all participating heroes. And that's pretty bad for the orange player because most of his heroes were participating so we can move this guy back here but he still has two more heroes to go and next we would discard those cards you do that normally right after the challenge and you do that in the opposite order in which you played those so this card will be on top of the deck here it doesn't really matter but the reason why you're doing this there are a lot of cards that refer to the top of your discard pile so the order does matter at some point in time second and final challenge for this round is lane will not be battled so he will activate this one here he would gain one gold and would be allowed to, to, to draw one two cards so that's not bad that's not bad and on the blue player on the orange player's turn we already know the warding card is in effect as blue actually wants to win one challenge i think he wants to get greedy so that's now a plus one so in total that's one versus zero at this point in time but he's a really mean fella. So he will now play his remaining gank. So the green one is still active. A laceration. Draw three cards from the opponent's deck. Choose one and discard one of these cards. And put the rest on the top of his deck in the order you want. So let's do that real quick. And I think in this card case he wants to discard this card. And he puts those cards back on top of his deck. So right now it's again one versus one. And it's back to the blue player. And I think he really wants to win this challenge. Challenge. So he will now play his gang card, the jungler pinch, steal a gold from the opponent's pool. How awesome is that? So let's take one gold. We can definitely use it during the next round. Then it's back to the orange player and unfortunately he now has to pass. So it's two versus one. So finally the blue player is making some progress. In this challenge both the green player and the blue player were present. So we also see now a level two character for the blue player. Isn't that nice? Awesome. And yeah, that's how you play Halo Darkness, which is, I think, very cool board game representation of the whole MOBA genre. It really comes with a lot of interesting tactical decisions you have to take throughout the game. Shall I redraw from one lane to have this hero support another lane? Should I discard cards to gain the benefits or do I maybe need the hero this round in order not to actually lose the game? How much cards should I sacrifice for a particular lane before I call it a day and focus on the lanes to come and yeah, really things like that you have to consider. The vast majority of hero action and items cards promises a very high level of replayability, especially if you want to experience the synergies between various different heroes. But it will definitely take some time until you make some actual meaningful decisions during the drafting. As mentioned, the game is currently on Kickstarter, so definitely check out the campaign page and grab yourself a copy if you enjoy highly tactical games with a pretty unique setting for a board game. Hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough of Elo Darkness and hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then, bye bye.